Today we're having an interview with Amy Rylander from amyrylander.com, prophetic artist. You're having coffee with Conrad. Conrad rocks! Welcome, welcome, welcome to another edition of Coffee with Conrad. This is Conrad from ConradRocks.net. Today I'm really excited to be interviewing Amy Rylander from AmyRylander.com. Be sure to bookmark this show because I'm providing all the links mentioned in this podcast in the show notes. Here's a little bit about Amy. Amy Rylander is a powerful voice in the body of Christ calling forth the bride into the fullness of her inheritance in divine destiny. In 2004, the Lord spoke to Amy and told her that he wanted her to use art to worship him and to advance his kingdom on the earth. She has no formal art training, but the Lord has taught her by his spirit. For the past several years, the Lord has used Amy's art to speak to people in his church. She paints at conferences and church worship services, retreats, weddings, hospitals, businesses, political events, and she paints personal prophetic paintings as well. Amy is uniquely gifted at teaching and helping people discover their true identity in Christ and access to all of their inheritance. Amy also enjoys teaching and training people of all ages how to hear from God and how to flow with the Holy Spirit as well as how to paint prophetically. Amy and her husband, Donald, have been married over 22 years. They currently live in Mississippi with their three sons. Without further ado, here's the interview with Amy Rylander. You are having coffee with Conrad on ConradRocks.net. Hello, everybody. Do I have an amazing treat for you today? I have Amy Rylander from AmyRylander.com. She's on the phone with me via Skype, and we're going to talk about a lot of good prophetic art stuff. How are you doing, Amy? I'm doing great. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I've seen you at Clay Nash. I've seen you at the Capitol. I've seen you uh, all around. And what, what is it that you do for the people that don't know? Well, um, I am a prophetic artist. I um, paint in a lot of conferences and worship services, uh, but I also paint in other realms too. And I do prophetic painting, uh, personal prophetic painting. I do, um, I paint for government type things, Um, but I also teach. I teach prophetic art, um, activate prophetic artists. And um, I also teach uh, really about any kind of subject. So um, I love to teach about identity. Well, the times that I've seen you, when I've actually watched what you you do, I saw you at Clay Nash's church. I remember, I forgot which convention it was, but you were painting during the worship. And it's like, it's a real awesome prophetic atmosphere. And what what goes on in your spirit when you're doing that? Uh, that is, uh, basically, I'm worshiping. I'm worshiping the Lord and hearing from God. And so uh, it all comes out of a heart of worship. And I, I focus in on what the Lord is saying and what he's trying to say to the people, what he's saying maybe to the region or whatever the audience is at the moment. And, um, and then I paint that. And as I'm painting, uh, the Holy Spirit's just, you know, directing me. He's, you know, saying, add this, to, you know, do this color, put this here. And sometimes... He's telling me why, and sometimes I'm just doing it, not really knowing why, and he shows me later. Uh, right. Each one is it's very different. No, I didn't mean to interrupt. I was like, wow, so I, so you're actually kind of painting in the dark, so to speak. The Holy Spirit gives you the, the microcosm of the whole puzzle that comes forth later. Yes, yes. Yeah. He usually gives me a starting point or a scripture or something like that, maybe a word, and I just go, and then he... He's just developing it as it goes. It never comes out like what I think it's going to be. <laughs> Though often the word uh, will be the same or there'll be more to it, that kind of thing. Yeah, I noticed it. Uh, the, the two times that I saw you do that, I saw that you had like the interpretation at the end. Yes, um, I always have a word. And that, that's kind of what makes what I do a little different than maybe some other prophetic artists. What I do actually is a, it's a now word, prophetic word to um, the church or to a person or a community or region, whatever. 
there's a voice behind it. There's something the Lord is trying to communicate to his people. Amen. So what would the what would be the message that the Lord's trying to say through your overall ministry right now? What's the thrust? Overall, really, it's unity in the body and how we all need each other and that we all have a, uh, a piece and a portion. Uh, my calling really, as I paint, and a lot of my paintings have this theme, it's really speaking to people about who they are in Christ, who their identity is, what their inheritance is. Overall, my ministry is really connecting people with one another, building relationships, and reconciliation on many levels. I see here that you founded We Are One Ministries. Yes, that's actually um, the ministry my husband and I um, developed. And because I do have my hands, and uh, both of us have our hands in a lot of different things, we felt like the Lord uh, said to establish that. So everything kind of falls under that umbrella. So Amor Ellinger Art is kind of a, a portion of We Are One. We do... A lot of things I do, lead, I do intercession, you know, I gather, I'll have leadership gatherings where I gather uh, leaders maybe from across the state and, and just come together, worship together, pray together, connect people. Um, I do things that have to do with the government. I, you know, pray into government. I minister in government. All those things kind of fall under that one umbrella of We Are One. Amen. And I noticed that uh, you're, you're, you have a new design. There's a big hubbub controversy about the Mississippi state flag. It's been going on for quite some time. And I noticed that you painted a new possible state flag. Yes, I actually didn't paint it. So this oh, one put was it a, together. I mean, I'm sorry. Put it together. <laughs> yeah, that's fine because, uh, you know, that people think that's, you know, that's how the design came was a painting. But um, actually, uh, I've been in Mississippi for um, over 11 years now. And um, when I first came, the Lord began to give me a, a true love for this state. And I didn't realize you could actually love a state. I, I wasn't even <laughs> aware of that because the, I think the Lord was really developing the intercession part of my gifting. So I just began to just pray for the state. And the Lord would speak to me about Mississippi and, and his heart for Mississippi, his destiny for Mississippi. And he actually gave me a painting to paint for the state of Mississippi and give it to our governor. And so they have that. That assignment there from the Lord really just opened a lot of other doors. It helped me to really see his heart for the state. And so uh, over time, you know, I've been doing different things that are, you know, I do different paintings that may be prophesied to the entire state. And uh, I know the Lord has a destiny for the state of Mississippi. He loves Mississippi. And uh, he wants to actually touch the nation through through this state. Back in 2015, kind of early in the year, uh, the Lord spoke to me about the flag. Actually, I was in the middle of a meal with my husband, and the, the Lord interrupted me <laughs> and said, I would like you to create a new state flag for Mississippi. And no one was more surprised than me. I, I really was kind of shocked at the thought. And I thought, this is impossible. I don't know how to do that kind of thing. That's not my thing. And I knew that it would take a lot of prayer in, into that assignment. So, you know, I began praying into that. And I submitted it to some spiritual leaders of mine, also uh, over to my intercessors. And everyone was in agreement that this, this was God. I was hearing God. And so um, I began just praying into what it would look like. Um, when he first gave me the assignment, I wasn't sure if it was really to, because he wanted it to be the new flag. I was, wasn't sure if it was really more for intercession purposes, kind of like the other painting, just kind of a declaration over the state. Or was he really just testing me? You know, would I really uh, obey him? Would I really do this crazy thing? And then over, I guess it was about in the fall is when the design finally came to me. I've had, I had several confirmations uh, between then. I had people call me that I really didn't have a relationship with that had said, uh, the Lord spoke to them that we needed a new flag, that years ago that they had voted to keep the flag, but God has changed their heart and they think it's time for a new flag. And why don't I design one? And so it was, it was confirmation. I had several people approach me with that idea. And so I knew it really was the Lord. And then in the fall, uh, he gave me the whole 
the whole thing in one sitting. He had me do it on a computer, which is really out of my box. And then just kind of wait. He gave me all the meanings, the whole thing at once. And so it's just been a process. And then I finally just recently, the Lord said, now it's time to release it publicly. Awesome. So you have the, you have the prophetic meaning for the colors and the signal, yes. the, the, the magnolias, the stars, olive branch and the arrows and the, yeah, that's pretty awesome. So w- when I was thinking about that, you know, there's a lot of controversy about the old flag. And I was thinking, man, this, this is a real boiling pot of emotion, but you have in the text that I saw, it says Mississippi flag of hope. So this is something we can go from looking back at the past, but look at a hopeful future. Absolutely. And that's really what this, this whole thing is about. You know, flag is really the, uh, the flag or the banner is really the identity of this, of a state or country or whatever. It's how the rest of the world sees you. Something I just wanted to make people really clear about is that we're not anyone who is pro changing the flag um, isn't necessarily like from my heart. I don't feel like we should take it out of people's homes. I don't think we should take the old flag or the Confederate flag out of museums or monuments, anything, any historical site. I, and some of the comments I've heard is you're trying to change history which this, there's nothing that's further from the truth because we, we obviously can't change history. It is uh, our history. And it doesn't mean we're not proud of our history or that we want to dishonor any people who have died for the South back when we had the Civil War. But it is about what's happening now. It's about our future. It's about moving forward. And so I think flying a flag at our Capitol saying this is who we are now today. Um, I even have no problem with you know, the old flag existing, but we do need a new one for who we are now and forward for the rest of the world, but also for us, because many people are still tied, their mindset still tied in the past. And so it is really about moving forward. Amen. So that's a brave, that's a brave thing the Lord has you doing. (laughs) Thank you. Yes. Yes. I could talk a long time about that. So anyway, One of the things that I get questioned about, and I questioned the Lord about it as well, back in, you know, before I did this, is, you know, I'm not even from Mississippi. So why would I, what gives me the right to think I should be the one to design this flag? Honestly, I would not have chosen myself to design this flag. I'm actually just obeying the Lord. But uh, the Lord showed me that, you know, he used... He used foreigners all throughout the scriptures. In fact, Abraham was a foreigner. It, it's actually part of being a follower of Christ is you, you, you have to leave what's where you were and move forward with him. You know, even many people in his, in Jesus's line, some of the women were foreigners. The Lord told me personally that he loves to use foreigners. And so being a foreigner doesn't disqualify you. And in fact, you know, where your home is, is, is really what it's about. And Mississippi is my home. It's not where I, I came out of my mother's womb. But how, how, how long have you lived here though? You're not really from afar. You, you're here. Now. <laughs> I'm here. I've been here 11 years. Wow. And I was going to talk about, I wanted to ask you something else. You said the Lord spoke to you in 2004 and said he wanted to use for you to use art to worship him and advance his kingdom on the earth. What was that experience like? How did that happen? Okay. Um, I have always been creative. I always loved art. Um, as I as a child, I was really, um, you know, I thought when I grew up, I want to be an artist. And I did not grow in a Christ, grow up in a Christian home. Um, and so, really, my parents really discouraged that pursuit because it didn't seem profitable. And so, I really did just set art aside completely. And um, I got saved when I was twenty years old. And when I was around. Uh, let's see, I guess it was in 2004 is, well, 2003, I I just really felt like I could paint. I was just kind of like, I think I can do this. And I actually had some paints around the house and, and thought, well, I'm going to see if I can. (laughs) And I tried to paint something. I painted two, uh, two paintings. They were prophetic at the time. I didn't know what that was and didn't know what I was doing. I just did it. And then in 2004, I asked for paints for Mother's Day from my husband. And so I just sat down and, and decided I'm going to copy a picture 
of a calendar. It was a um, landscape picture. And as I was painting that picture, the Lord spoke to me and he said, I have gifted you to use it for me. So at that time, I really didn't understand what that meant. I just thought, well, I guess that means I'm supposed to bless his people. So for several years, I would just paint paintings and give them away and bless people. I, I did a lot of um, still lifes at that time, just really practicing painting, just learning to paint, really. Um, he would not let me take any lessons or training of any kind. That's um, amazing. Yeah. That's God. That's how God does yeah. stuff. Keep going. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally God. He uh, Now I realize it's because that's part of my testimony. I was truly Holy Spirit taught from the beginning. And then really in 2005, uh, I was, I had gone to bed. I was in bed trying to sleep and I couldn't sleep. And the Lord said, I want you to get up and paint. And so I got up and got to my canvas and he said, I want you to paint the Holy Spirit. And I was like, what? I, you know, I don't even, I don't know what Holy Spirit looks like. And then immediately he showed me a picture because up to that point I was just doing still lifes. And so I painted a picture of a vessel with water coming out and I really didn't know anything more about it. I mean, I didn't understand. I have more understanding of that now, looking back. But at the time, I was like, oh, okay, that was kind of cool. But after that, the Lord would not let me paint any more still lives. He's like, from now on, you're going to paint what I show you. And so then in 2009 was my first time to actually paint publicly in front of people. I was really nervous about it. I had people in my life that encouraged me and said, hey, you can do this. I think you, you should do this. So I tried it one uh, night at my church, at my home church. Um, we had a communion um, worship night, and I just kind of set up a little place in the back and uh, tried to do it. And I was so nervous, you know, because I thought, what am I doing? I don't even know what I'm doing. And uh, when I finished, I didn't feel like it was done because you could see a lot of the white canvas poking through and that's like a pet peeve of mine like I don't want any white canvas showing the Lord said Amy it is what it is and I he taught me from that moment on that when I paint publicly it is a now word and is I paint it you know whatever time is allotted whether it's 30 minutes or two hours whatever I finish or at that time it's done it is what it is and I'm not allowed to add to it I'm not allowed to change it so that's just how he, he is done with me. I was going to ask you something else, too. As, as far as my audience is into the prophetic, and, and one of the things that, remember how King Saul in the Old Testament, he wasn't a prophetic guy, but he got around the prophets and he began to prophesy. So that, that kind of corporate overflow, and I'm thinking when you're up there with the people that are worshiping, I mean, they that prophetic soup is actually coming forth in your painting somehow, right? That's right. I believe I've been prophetic longer than I realized I was prophetic. It's taken a while and it's, and I've developed over time. So it's been a season of God just developing me. And so sometimes, yes, the atmosphere I'm in certain places, like it said, Klein Ashes church, it's easy to prophesy. Yeah, I, know. <laughs> I mean, it just flows out. <laughs> Amen. Actually, I can anywhere, anytime because, you know, it's kind of in me. It's the, it's the voice of the Lord, and he just speaks, and he shows me things. So sometimes it's a picture, sometimes it's a word, sometimes it's a combination of both, um, and that's just... Amen, and so, yeah. it seems, does, does it seem to be like the geography of where you're at as well? Absolutely, um, and I noticed that when the Lord started tra having me travel and go to different cities and states, that really the Lord... When he sends me somewhere, it's usually to prophesy to the land. It's to to that place. And so the words generally are more corporate, though what's so beautiful and amazing about the prophetic and about even, well, prophetic art specifically, is that it's so multidimensional. So a person can really connect with a piece of art and be like, wow, this is really a word to me. But really, it also could be a word for that corporate setting. But in reality, it's also a corporate word for that city. And then actually in reality, it's a, it could be a word for that state or that nation and so on. So it's layered. Yeah. The way I look at it, and, and this is something I say in my podcast a lot, it's kind of like the rock 
hits the water. And then there's that first obvious wave, that first obvious ripple of revelation, but there's other ripples that emanate from that. You know yes, I mean? absolutely. Perfect. That's a great description. Yeah, something like that. So so people can grab their part of the puzzle. <laughs> they absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> but what's really cool is like the Lord may be saying something to me privately. So many of my paintings that you'll see on Facebook or that are available as prints are maybe something the Lord was showing me for myself. And then as I paint it and I post it, then it becomes people are like, oh, my gosh, this is what God's been saying to me, you know, and other people grab it. And it, it's really speaking to them because really that's what God's saying to the body at that moment. Amen. You know how the seraphim, they're flying around the Lord. They're going around. They they have a different perspective, and they say, holy, holy, holy is Lord God Almighty. Well, they're getting a new perspective. So when someone comes up to your painting, they may grab something that the Lord's speaking specifically to them about. Am I just reiterating what you said, basically? Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. <laughs> in a way. In a way. Uh, I mean, the um, Lord's speaking to them. Sometimes. Go, Go ahead. ahead. Sorry. No, I was just saying, if, if I'm catching it, I want to make sure I'm catching it. He could be speaking politically, geographically, culturally to the church and individually to people that come up and look at it. They can all grab a piece. Like, like we look at the whole Bible, but one of us really needs Romans 8, 9 right now. <laughs> yes. You know, yes. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. And so people, you can look at the same painting and people get something totally different out of it. You know, and when I used to paint at the very beginning, I wouldn't post the word. That went with the painting because I really wanted people to lean into the Lord and find out what is God saying to me out of this piece. Um, and then as I grew and I was really encouraged by other people in my life that said, you know, you really need to share what God was saying to you as well, because maybe people aren't, you know, wouldn't know that, wouldn't hear that. And it doesn't really take away from the fact that it means something else to someone else because there's no wrong answers. <laughs> Amen. I'm excited about that. If the Holy Spirit's inspiring you to paint and then someone in the prophetic's coming up to look at it, that would be just awesome just to talk, just to talk to people what what revelation they're getting. And I see you teach this as well. Yes. My heart really is. um, I think the most important tool we have as believers is to hear from God. And I believe that's like the first thing we should teach people. They get saved. We need to teach them how to hear God because uh, there's no limits when you hear. He wants to be our teacher. Really what it is when I, when I do, when I teach this, it's really about hearing God. It's a hearing God uh, school. We use the prophetic art because that's a way of manifesting what we're hearing. It's a way of showing and it's a way of uh, memorializing it. It's a way of making an Ebenezer stone. This is what God said to me right now, right here. People think, oh, I'm going for this prophetic art class, but I'm not really an artist. You don't have to be an artist. You don't have to ever have painted many, many or drawn. Uh, you don't even have to be creative. People say they're not creative, but I, I actually don't believe that's the truth. But because <laughs> I believe we're all creative because we're made in his image, uh, just manifest different in each one of us. There's an anointing that is caught. And so I believe in impartation. So I, I lay hands on everybody and, and pray for them to, to catch that gift uh, because it is a gift from the Lord. So um, you can share your gifts. Now, if someone wants to contact you and learn more about what you do, you, they can go to amyrylander.com. Absolutely. Yes. And there's a contact Amy portion in there and they can just message me that way. That's, that's probably the easiest way to or you can go through my um, Facebook pages as well and message me. Amen. And also they can get your prints. They can get your yes. prints. Of, yeah, amen. And I sell originals too. So I sell originals and prints online um, on my website. I wanted to ask you before we stop and before I ask you to pray, remember the eagle with the keys? Yes. Can you uh, tell me what was going on? Okay. Yeah, that's one of my favorite ones with the two keys. Yeah, and I'm the eagle at it rising. Right now. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> that one actually uh, is one of my favorite ones because it came out of a teaching. Because I also love to teach people about who they are in Christ, and so the Lord gave me a teaching um, about access and authority, and He showed me them as two keys. We gained um, these keys. We didn't earn them. We gained them just because 
of who Jesus is and what he did for us. He, he paid for those keys. Um, but then there's, he also showed me, um, well, the, that, well, let me go back the keys. So there's one, the access key represents our access to him. It's access to intimacy. It's access to, um, his heart, every, but it's also access to like all his benefits, like everything he paid for, we have free access to, we have access to him. We have access to all of his benefits and, um, and then authority. It's, it's being able to use the key. It's being, knowing who you are and being able to use that authority and understand that authority. That's what the keys represented. The painting itself, the eagle, of course, the eagle represents, um, it can be the prophetic, but it also can just be um, a believer. You know, we can all identify with the eagle because he wants us to, you know, rise up on wings of eagles. And, oh, and man, I love that. <laughs> yes. Uh, he wants us to see from his perspective. Um, really, we can identify with the eagle. And, you know, we go through hard things and, and that and hard places. And what's so amazing and about God, so beautiful about God is that he never lets anything go to waste. Nothing is for nothing. Even though he didn't cause this tor horrible situation or he didn't cause this thing you're going through, he didn't put you through this. He didn't want this for you. But, you know, we live in a world where, you know, there's a real enemy and stuff happens to us and around us. But God will somehow use that. It's amazing. He uses what we go through and he gives us authority in those areas. So when we go through something, we now have an authority in that area, an overcoming authority we didn't have before. And so that's what the eagle rising represents. You know, just like the phoenix rises out of the ashes and, you know, it represents new birth. The eagle in this painting rising out of the ashes now is rising out of the fire with new authority. And that's what the purple represents is authority. So I love that painting. There's so much in there. <laughs> Amen. I could sit here and stare at it for a while and just pray about it. It's yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, I want to thank you for, for coming on coffee with Conrad. And I always have my guests pray for the, the people listening to the podcast before we close. Absolutely. It would be my honor. Father, we just, come to you and we're just so thankful for all that you're doing and I thank you Lord that you are raising up a people that know who they really are that understand what you really paid for that you paid for more than just for us to go to heaven one day you paid for us to live a victorious life now on the earth and that there's things you want us to do and there's things that you that you have you dream for this world and for us and that we can partner with you and make your dreams come true. And so I thank you, Father, for raising up a people that that know who they are. I thank you, Father, for all of these listeners that are listening, Lord, that you just put in them a hunger for more, a hunger to understand, a hunger to see themselves bigger. I just hear the Lord saying, I give you permission to dream. He wants his people to dream with him. He has dreams for you. So, Father, I thank you for permission to dream with you again. And I thank you, Lord, for uniting us and connecting the body and an understanding that we need one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you very much for that. Thank you, Amy Rylander from amyrylander.com, prophetic artist. I'm going to include all of her links wherever you hear this podcast. Thanks for coming on Coffee with Conrad. Amen. Now, wasn't that awesome? I really appreciate Amy coming on the show and having coffee with Conrad. Now, I want you to be sure to share this episode with your friends and family over social media. And remember that I've included all of the links mentioned in this show amyrylander.com the Facebook pages like Amy Rylander Art as well as We Are One Ministries so be sure to bookmark and share God bless you till we meet again dig deeper and go higher dig deeper go higher at comradrocks.net